Hey guys, what's going on? James here back with the income journey and in today's video, I'm going to be talking about how I went out there and purchased my very first income cash flow producing website from flippa.com. Over the last three months or so, I've been creating a few videos here and there around building a niche website portfolio that generates passive income. Currently, I'm growing two sites off my own from scratch. One of them is starting to get some really decent traffic and bring in some revenue. The other one is kind of just sitting there. It hasn't got as much traction. But from the start, I always wanted to go out there and purchase one or two websites at the start that were fairly small so I could learn the ropes off this business business model much quicker and finally I've been able to find a website and purchase it and in this video I'm going to go through and talk about the process that I used one to find websites that actually fit my criteria because on flippa.com there's a lot of terrible websites there's a lot of rubbish out there so I wanted to make sure that you guys can see my sourcing criteria, what I'm looking for in a website before actually even negotiating or talking to the seller. Then I'm going to go through that process of negotiating, talking to the seller, how all that works and how I kind of do my due diligence on the website before sending that money over. And then I'll talk about how the transfer works and that process as well. Over the last three months or so, I have been trying to source other websites, but I just couldn't get my hands on them because either they were just bidding up too high, I didn't want to pay that big a multiple on them, or they just got away from me too quick. There was actually one last week that was costing in around $16,000 that I was really, really interested in, but I just caught on to it slightly too late. I just started messaging the buyer. I got the analytics in and I was ready to place a bid on this and then someone else just snapped it up like that. So unfortunately, I didn't get that website, but this week we have finally purchased one the money is currently in escrow so hopefully we'll get that website today but let's go ahead and talk about that process that i went through to find this website and actually purchase it if you guys do enjoy this content please do give it a big thumbs up hit subscribe if you're new here if you want to follow along with the journey hopefully in three to four months from now i'll be flipping this website for a bigger price and i paid for it we'll see where it goes so if you want to follow along on that journey make sure and hit subscribe let's go ahead jump into this and go through the process that i used to source my first website on Flippa. So the first thing I want to talk about is the criteria I looked for when browsing these websites to try and find some to purchase. So essentially just within my range, my price range that I wanted to pay, what I would select. So there's two places that I really went out there to try and find websites. One was Motion Invest and two was Flippa. Motion Invest already has like pre-vetted websites that they're a broker they go ahead, they look at the websites, they look at the stuff, they kind of verify everything to make sure everything is okay. And then they list them on their website. Whereas Flippa on the other hand is really just a marketplace that anyone can upload a website on. It's kind of, you know, you have to really go out there and verify the claims that the owner is making. You have to do your more due diligence on it. Whereas Motion Invest kind of does that for you. So you're probably paying more of a multiple on Motion Invest, but you do have that kind of sense of security. Whereas on Flippa, you're kind of going in the wild. And if you don't know how to do the proper due diligence, which I'm kind of new to. I'm very new to this, and especially this business model. I don't understand all of the components fully yet. So I'm kind of more in the dark when sourcing on Flippa. So there are the two places. I was just browsing Motion Invest kind of Monday to Friday, seeing their new uploads. And there was a couple of websites that I thought I liked. One of them I put a bid in, but didn't get it. Uh, and all of the other ones were really just in niches that I didn't care about and I didn't want to get into. On Flippa, there was probably three or four different websites that I actually found that I liked. So what was the criteria on Flippa that I used? If we head over to Flippa, this is what it looks like on the main screen. There's tons of businesses, e-commerce businesses, SaaS businesses, and blog content. So I generally just click this search button right here, and then you've got all of these different filters down the side. So I was really looking for a website that was anywhere between $5,000 and $15,000. That was kind of my price range. I didn't want to put too much money into this in my first you know, acquisition. I wanted to figure everything out. So what I did was come down here and I select blog. That's the type of business that I want. Also, you can select reviews. We're going to get a lot of review websites and stuff like that that are generally making money through Amazon commissions. So I went ahead and I select them too. Monthly users, I'm not too worried about because that varies a lot depending on the niche. Some niches could have 100,000 visitors per month and be making $500 a month and others could have 3,000 visitors a month and also be making $500 a month. So what I had to come down here was monthly profit. My minimum was $100. My site age was one year. And really, 
you know, if you can find sites that are older than that, that's going to be better. But the site age, you want it to be over a year. So you can really say that, look, it's been in, you know, Google's algorithm for a while. It hasn't got knocked out of search rankings. There's been no issues with it. So you want it to be over a year. If it's less than a year, it's kind of more risky. And there's a chance that, you know, it could get, if you buy a website, it could get thrown out of Google's algorithm and you could lose all the traffic overnight. So the longer it's been around, probably the better chance it has of withstanding algorithm changes. So the kind of main things that I'm selecting here. So now we can see, you know, there's 284 results. So we can scroll through these and see and stuff like this, like shapeable.com, $575 per month. If it's six days left and it's only at 4,000, it doesn't really look like a website that I'd want to buy. But there's some stuff down here that, you know, Simply Yummy Keto. This is actually a website that I looked at and did some commenting on. Uh, you can see down here, we can check all of the traffic stats. It's kind of downtrending a little bit. And we've got the financials over here as well. And we're looking at an authority score of 40 on this website. And you can scroll down, go through all of this information. A lot of the times I'm just scrolling through here, trying to find websites that I would have some sort of interest in, potentially writing some content myself so I can, you know, increase the speed we can put out content. And also, you know, just something that I kind of vaguely understand or have an understanding around it so that I can easily outsource writing to writers. For example, here, bloomshower.com, I believe this is some form of, of weed website. So best LED grow lights for weed. So it's an interesting niche. It's probably something that's going to grow over the next few years. But again, there's a risk here that with Google and this niche, it's kind of sketchy. It's not something I'd want to get into, but it is currently making $141 a month. And there's a buy it now on this for $5,000. That is kind of in around the exact multiple I would want to be paying. I believe that's like a 35, 33X multiple on the website there. But there's just, you know, it's, it's a lot of risk to this, especially I'm in the UK. So I don't want to be buying like a weed website and selling, learn how to easily grow marijuana, you know, eBooks. I don't want to do that because I don't know the legalities around that. It's probably not uh, great doing it in the UK. Maybe if you're living in California, it might be a place you'd want to, you know, sell that sort of stuff. But I don't want to, but it's an interesting website all the same. When you're scrolling through Flippa, you'll also find a lot of websites like this. And I would recommend probably avoiding these, right? So mycheesetool.com, it claims here $628 per month, but it says potential profit. And that's a big kind of red flag to me. This is a premium website. It's not currently getting any traffic. It might have an aged uh, domain or something like that, but it's not currently making any traffic. And for me at that point, I'm probably not going to buy it. You can see buy it now for 1797. It'll kind of look like this on all of these premium sites. And you can do instant payment via PayPal. I would not recommend buying any of these types of websites. So I stay away from them. What I did find was a lot of the good websites that I would see got bought up very, very quickly. I didn't have a chance to bid on them or get all the information from the seller before they were gone. So what you really want to be doing is coming on the flipper every day, coming down in here to most recent, and this is going to show you any new websites that have currently been uploaded inside of my criteria. Because there was actually an interesting one here that I seen just after I purchased the other one called garagetoolguy.com. And when I seen this website, it kind of looked good to me, right? We have, you know, traffic is growing month over month here. Uh, so is revenue. It's pretty high here in March 2021. We have an authority score. The higher the authority score on your website, the easier it's going to be to rank for competitive keywords. So obviously 31 here, 10.9 thousand uh, backlinks, 117 referring domains, and it's ranking for 2,000 keywords. So this looks really, really nice. And this is one that I, I would have spent more time looking into if I hadn't have bought the other one. But if we take a look at the website, to me, there is a lot of stuff that can be done here. The red website looks like it was created back in 2004. It just, you know, an instant theme update here would definitely do this website, you know, some good, right? There's no advertising on this website. So we could go ahead and add advertising that would instantly make us some more money. Certain sites you may not want to add ads to it may affect your affiliate commissions. But you know, a lot of them from what I have seen in the case studies that I've read, adding adverts to your website generally doesn't hurt uh, Amazon commissions. So if you can go ahead and add both, it's an instant way to like buy this website, add Ezoic to it, leave it for a month or two, build up that monthly revenue and then flip it for double. So the site that I actually ended up buying doesn't have any ads on it. So one of the first things I'm going to do here in the coming months is add adverts to it. See, does that affect the commissions? If it doesn't, it should add, you know, an extra sum of money to the website every month. And for every hundred dollars you add to the site, that's an extra like three grand in site value. So if we can increase stuff like that very quickly, we can increase our multiple quickly and make some nice money on a flip. So that is the initial criteria that I'm looking at when I first try to identify 
identify sites that then I can go and do more research on. So let me show you a couple of sites, three of the other ones that I did bid on, I did actually try and acquire, uh, but was unsuccessful, unfortunately. But I'll show you them just to show you the type of websites that we're looking at. And I'll like, kind of identify some of the points where I thought there was opportunity on these sites. So right here is sewkitkit.com. And this is essentially a sewing website. So these guys do a lot of sewing reviews, machines and stuff like that. The website was selling, uh, it actually ended up, I think selling for about $5,500. I was willing to pay I have no more than kind of five for it. So I got outbid. I think the website was making about $80 a month to show. So the multiple was kind of high, but it's a smaller site. So you're going to see higher multiples right there. But what I thought I could do on this website was add an affiliate program that I know does really, really well because I use that affiliate program for print on demand and that is Creative Fabrica. A lot of these sewing websites and I looked at the competition, they actually go ahead and they either sell or promote or do articles around, you know, uh, like templates and free quilting guides and, you know, sewing patterns and stuff like that. And Creative Fabrica actually has a lot of these on their site. So I thought I can add that affiliate program to it. Creative Fabrica is a really good affiliate program that pays a monthly commission. So I could go ahead and add it to this site, hopefully get some recurring commissions in, which is awesome. You know, Amazon affiliate only pays once per seal, but if I can get 10 customers a month on this, that's $40 recurring every single month with very little work. And as long as the person stays on, I'm getting that money every single month. So if we can get organic traffic to the site, acquire 10 new customers a month that's really rapidly going to stack up. And if I can get this website through $600 a month, I can then go ahead and sell that website for $20,000 or so. And I was only buying it for five. So that's where I seen the opportunity on this site. Someone else went ahead and bought it. I'm not sure you know, how well it's been doing. It looks like they went ahead and updated a lot of the articles. A lot of the articles were outdated. It was like, you know, sewing machine review 2019. So obviously who's gonna click that when it's 2021, right? So you, you could have went through updated all the articles and stuff like that, which is what I was planning to do if I bought this. The next website that I really like, this was the one that I tried to purchase last week or tried to get some more information on last week. It's compounding.works.com. And this is essentially like an investing blogs, but I really enjoyed this thesis behind this blog. I love investing. I love like, you know, personal development. And that's essentially what this blog is about. And it does something like 30 to 40,000 page views a month. It was, it got ended up selling for $16,000. Again, this was the site that I tried to, you know, talk to the seller, but it was just too late. It actually got promoted. Uh, it actually got promoted in the website flip newsletter, which I'd recommend anyone interested in this checking out. He essentially goes ahead and sends out sites that have good potential every month. Really cool newsletter. Um, but compound your knowledge one blog post at a time. So they're talking about cryptocurrency, financial independent investment ideas. This site was making five to $600 per month. Obviously it is in line with this YouTube channel that I run as well. Obviously it's in line with this YouTube channel that I run as well. And it's also something that I would really enjoy writing about just myself. And I'd like to start a blog around investing anyway. So I thought, pick this up, you know, keep grinding away at it. It's making $600 a month. I thought there was a lot of potential. It just slipped away from me though. Someone else got it first uh, and hopefully they can go ahead and grow up further. But that was another one of the websites. You can see here, very varying niches like sewing. I really know nothing about investing. That kind of something that I like, but it doesn't really diversify me away from this YouTube channel too much or the other niches that I'm in too much. I would like to kind of have you know, a mixture, a triangle of websites that are all in different niches just to diversify a little bit. The other one here was Amphibian Life. And this website, again, I believe did end up selling uh, just for a little over what I wanted to pay. I think it was in around like four to $5,000 again. It was one of the smaller websites. It was making, I think about $100 a month or so. And it was just in around here talking about little frogs and amphibians and toads and all of that stuff. And you can see here, the person has went in. They have added a ton of new content to this website since they bought it, which is really cool to see. But again, this one just got sold out from under me and I didn't have a chance to, to purchase it. But again, it would have been a cool website and a completely different niche than anything that I've done before. Uh, and it's just an interesting one. Like I love learning about animals as a kid. I always like looked into animals and I love like snacks and stuff. Maybe I'll do a reptilian life website. We'll see here in the future. But those are three websites that I checked out that had potential 
that I thought looked good. So next up, let's talk about what we do once we've identified a website that we actually, you know, have a little bit of interest in purchasing. There's a few things that I'm particularly looking for when looking at that website and doing my due diligence. So the first thing I'm looking at is the traffic trend. Has it been affected by any recent updates? For example, I believe there was a December 2020 Google update. There was also one that just came out in April for review sites. So has the site been affected by any of those updates? If it has, can it recover? Did it recover from any in the past? And what is that kind of outlook looking like? into the future and just is it trending up or downward a lot of the sites that you'll find are trending downward but it's because maybe the site has been neglected by the seller it hasn't been updated with any content none of the current articles have been updated that's just slowly declining and that is not you know always a sign that you shouldn't purchase it it's maybe a sign that this site just needs a little bit more love and we can go ahead and add it and that's essentially what the site that i've bought looks like then i'm going out there and i'm looking for ways that i can improve the site so is there a few things out there that i can do to this site to instantly boost revenue as soon as i purchase it just like can i add advertising to the website and instantly get a boost in revenue is there articles where more amazon links could be added or amazon links missing is there opportunities to add affiliate links on the website that's a big thing where i could just increase revenue instantly is there niche potential moving forward so for this i would do a check on google trends and do a search for the niche is it trending upwards how does the niche do you know is it seasonality is there a certain peak in the year where it gets really popular and other times of the year it's really small you know that is something that isn't always a negative you could have certain sites that you know perform well in the winter and some perform well in the summer and they kind of bounce each other out which is fine but it's something to think about does the niche have potential in three to five years from now if you created you know a hoverboard site back in 2016 probably would have done really well but today that's not going to be around so i want niches that are going to be around for a long period of time obviously you know they're one going to make money for a longer period of time and also be easier to sell to someone because the niche is going to be around for years to come is there any other affiliate programs i can add to the site to increase commission so we talked about that on sokitkit.com there was an affiliate program i thought i could add to it that would really be beneficial one to the viewers but also to the recurring revenue on the site which would have been you know nice to make the next thing i want to look at is the backlink profile and this is something that i don't fully understand yet i'm not going to lie to you guys and pretend i'm an expert at this this is my first ever website purchase the backlinks kind of that's the one thing about this whole seo world that i'm kind of learning about and it kind of confuses me a little bit i've kind of got some basic knowledge around it for the website that i bought i used semrush to do a backlink analysis on the website to try and figure out is there any toxic backlinks there there was a few on the website that i bought again i'm not 100 percent sure how much that can affect my website is that something that's going to drop my website to zero is it something where i need to do a little bit of work there's also you know a lot of people talk about pbns or i think that stands for personal blog networks and people are buying backlinks from them and that can help to rank a site really quickly but it can also negatively affect the site if the links aren't you know in relation to the contents so you want to make sure the links you're getting through actually relate to your content help the site rather than hinder it so this is again something that i'm not going to go super into detail with i'll maybe link some videos down below that i have watched on it that do a much better job because again not something that i'm a super expert on or even know much about at all but it's something that you want to look into if you're interested in purchasing a site if it's out there and you look at it and it has a ton of toxic backlinks probably stay away from it the next thing is the room to add new content to the site can I go ahead and you know find in keyword research tools like SEMrush, Ahrefs? Can I go into them websites and find low competition keywords that I can go ahead and target if I'm doing some Google search analysis? Can I go ahead and find search terms that have low competition on them that I can go ahead and again write articles on and rank for pretty easily? That's something that I want to be looking at when I'm moving into the future. And for the website that I've purchased. There's a lot of that. I feel there's a lot of room to expand. It's a fairly broad domain that I can really expand out into different kind of sub niches within it, which is really nice to see. Another thing you really want to look at on the site is how well is the traffic diversified. You're going to find a lot of sites on Flipper that when you go ahead and add, ask for the analytics of the site, so you, that's what you definitely want to do. You want to message the seller and say, hey, can I see the analytics of the site? You want to go into the top content pages and find how well this site is diversified so if you're getting 60 percent of traffic to one single page on your website that leaves your website really really vulnerable to you know that getting knocked out of the rankings and now your traffic's been cut in more than half and that is not something you want to happen that cuts your revenue in half right so if you have you want to find a site the one that i purchased 
is very diversified. There's about, I think, the maximum traffic that one article gets. I think it's like 6% or so. In the next video, make sure and subscribe if you want to see it. I'm going to go through all of the stats of that website, how much it's making and all of that stuff. So make sure to subscribe if you want to see that. But, but you want to make sure that you know there's a wide variety of pages on the site that are bringing in traffic. So that's pretty much all of the stuff I'm looking for in a website. Now let's talk about the bidding process. So obviously, when you're going out there and trying to purchase one of these sites, you're going to have to put down some money. So how do you decide what you want to pay? Well, from what I've seen, it generally looks like the average multiple on a site is anywhere from about 30 to some 45 X uh, revenue on the site. So if the site is currently doing $500 a month, you're probably going to pay anywhere for like $15,000 to $20,000 for that website, maybe even more depending on the niche and how much potential there is in the future. So on something like motion invest, they'll just have a simple buy it now price. Generally, they do something called a Dutch auction where every time, like every two days, the price drops like $250 or so. So that's a way that you can just go ahead, buy it now. That's how it works over there. On Flippa, there's usually a bidding process. But what I have found is when you're bidding on all of these websites, like I was doing, generally they get, you know, they just get kind of crazy. Some of the multiples get really high and it gets out of hand. And when you get into a little bidding work it can get a little hectic. So I didn't really like doing that. And that's why I went ahead and I started looking at them recent websites that were uploaded and just contacted the buyer. Obviously they've uploaded a lot of the times these buyers need money in quickly for whatever reason. So I messaged them and I said, you know, hey, how much are you looking for this? I get all of the information that I need. I ask questions about any red flags that I have about the website, figure everything out make an offer so on the website that i bought i made an initial offer they said that it was kind of you know close to another offer that had ha that had got they need a little bit more so i upped it like 250 dollars or so and they were happy to go with that then there was one thing that i questioned about the website that kind of made me a little nervous so i said look i'm not willing to pay that price anymore I brought my offer back down to my original offer and kind of stuck to my guns there see if the money on that and we went ahead and made that purchase at that price so depending on like how many people are looking at the website, how competitive it is, you're going to have to make a negotiation for the price of it. But I would not recommend paying anywhere over like a 40 X multiple for a site unless there is some serious easy wins that you can add to the site to make more money. So I ask for the Google Analytics. We do all that research on, you know, the top pages. How does the traffic look? Is there any spikes or dips in traffic over time? We look at all that stuff inside Google Analytics. You just give them their email they'll add you to their Google Analytics account and you can look at everything uh, as kind of just like a, a viewer in Google Analytics. I also ask for a video showing inside the Amazon Associates uh, dashboard. Obviously, the site that I bought, that's the only place that makes money. So that was the only thing that I really had to verify. I made sure that the tracking tag is the same as the tags on the website and we see how much revenue the site is currently pulling in. So we checked that. I also checked that there was no manual penalties in the Google search console uh, for the website to make sure that it's kind of clean with Google and we're not going to hopefully run into any problems in the future with that. And that was pretty much the process that I went through talking to the buyer. Next thing, once we decided on a price, was going ahead and purchasing that website. And we did that through a service called escrow.com. So after doing all of that stuff, the next thing to do was go ahead and initiate this buying process. So the buyer went ahead and gave me a buy it now price of the price that we had negotiated. They put that on the flip listing. I go ahead and click buy it. Now at this stage, no money is changing hands. That then opens a buyer area inside Flippa where you can go back and forth with the seller. And then what happens is we use the service. Sometimes you're just buying through PayPal. Sometimes you can just pay with card or whatnot. We use a service called escrow.com. That's you're going to see a lot of listings on Flippa using. So on escrow.com, essentially what happens is you kind of pay the money to escrow.com. So I went ahead and did that. The money sits in escrow.com until all of the assets are then transferred over to you. And then you can say, yes, verify everything. It's all good. We've got all the stuff and then they release the money to the buyer. So it's kind of safer for both parties. They know the money's there before sending anything, uh, and they kind of just act as that middleman to secure the transaction. We then went ahead and signed some legal documents to kind of just make the transition real, and just so we got some protection in case something went wrong with the website uh, in the future. So we signed them, and that's essentially the point I am at right now. We're just waiting on the stuff being transferred over. Our deposit was just verified on escrow.com. So I'm just waiting on the assets being transferred over. So hopefully we get them today. It's currently Monday. Hopefully we get them in today. The website, you know, owner has been very back and forth with me. The website owner has been very good so far, back and forth with me, answering any questions or anything like that that I have. So the process has been pretty smooth so far. We'll hopefully get everything 
you know, sort it out today. We'll get a website into our hands. And then there's a lot of work to do to change everything over to, you know, our tracking links. There's a lot of work I want to do on the site to hopefully increase traffic fairly soon. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it for this video on buying a website and flip.com. Again, if you did like it, please hit the thumbs up button, hit subscribe if you're new here. And in the next video, we're going to go through all of the stats. Once we get all of the assets for the website, the Pinterest account, the, the Google Analytics, the Google Search Console, we're going to go through it all in a video so I can kind of show you guys currently where we're at right now. And then hopefully in three months from now, we'll be a little bit further forward with it, making a little bit more money, but we'll see where things go. So again, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. That video will come sooner this week. So if you do want to see it again, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button and check out some of these other videos on the channel. If you want to learn about the websites that I'm currently building out uh, right now, just from scratch and how they're doing, there's some videos on the channel about them. So you can check them out and I'll see you guys in the next one.